ultimate security. The ultimate security is God, is the confidence that God gives you that you will succeed and do what you need to do. But when the person is insecure, he finds giving away a quarter difficult. And so the captives are redeemed only by giving stuff, which is your consciousness, your feelings, your awareness. They are trapped by your desires. Let me tell you a story. There were two Hasidim. They were in jail in Siberia. They had no hope for release. They were in the Gulag and hardly anybody knew that they were there. Where they were. One of them was Reb Mendel Futterfass and the other was Reb Moshe Vyshensky. Moshe did not know that he had been put in a jail cell next to his friend Mendel. Neither did Mendel know that Moshe was next to him. Well, you see, you couldn't talk to anybody. You couldn't know that there was anybody else there that you were familiar with. And you went around once a day in a circle so that you could get some exercise, but you couldn't look around you. You couldn't see that there was a friend who was right walking next to you. So, one night, Moshe hears the sound of someone crying. Now, in jail, many people cry. They cry over their mothers, over their lovers, over their gambling habits, over the fights they had. They cry a lot. But this was a different kind of cry. It sounded almost like somebody praying. Somebody davening the way they davened and prayed in Lubavitch. This is a little closer. This is 3 a.m. And yes, it was somebody crying the words of prayers. Who could this someone be? Well, by getting word to the guard back and forth, they realized that next door to Ramosha was the story Hasid Ramendal Futafas who had been able to smuggle in the forbidden artifacts of a Jew, a talus and his tefillin. He was able to smuggle it in into his jail cell. But because of the guards looking everything over and knowing that this was prohibited, the only time he had to pray was between the hours of 3 and 4 in the morning, every morning, even in winter, when the sun rises about 9 o'clock. And so, Rav Moshe and Rav Vendel decided that they were going to talk to each other. That night at exactly 2 a.m., two bushy beards with worn out bodies and faces put their faces into the trough, the canal, the sewer line, the filthy sewer line that connected all of the cells together into one dirty exit. But because it was one trough, echoes went through very easily. And at 2 a.m., nobody else was listening. And they put their faces to the filthy, slimy sewer line. And it was cold and dark. And Moshe said to Mendel, Mendel. And Mendel says, Moshe! Moshe! Tell me, how are you? Are you happy? Moshe says to Mendel, how can I be happy? I'm here in this jail. I don't know if I'll ever see my children again. How can I be happy? And Mendel said, you must be happy. Of course, like this, they only have your body. But if you're not happy, then they also have your soul. And Mendel did not stop with that. Mendel gave part of his bread to the jailer so that the jailer would permit Moshe to stay with him for a month. And during that month, they worked long hours except for Shabbos. 
and after the month, Moshe and Mendel parted ways to see each other many, many years later in Israel and by the Rebbe. And Moshe recalled these days as follows. During the years, I've had many occasions to be happy. I saw the Rebbe, was by the Rebbe, saw my children grow and get married and have their own children. I became a spiritual guide in Kfar Chabad with no fear of being arrested for my religion. And yet, the happiest days of my life were those 30 days with Mendel Futterfass in a jail cell in Siberia. My friends, the essence of the soul is not in captivity. It is redeemed through the study of Torah, but only if we are happy. If we aren't happy, then our souls are in exile. This is before Tisha B'Av. We must resolve to be happy, happy who we are, happy to be Jews, happy to be people of the world who are capable of doing good things, capable of giving charity, capable of sharing our bounties with another human being. And we are capable of giving this message to the whole world. If we all are happy because God created us and that we can share with another human being, even if it means giving up our own bread, then we will be released from our bondage. First, the bondage of the evil inclination in our hearts that we can do what we need to do to do the right thing. But then the bondage of the misery of the human condition where people hate each other and people try to destroy each other because this will herald in a new era, an era of love and compassion, of peace and tranquility wisdom and understanding of the presence of God with the third base